uh, what I had in my heart a scripture was something that the Lord talked to, to me about many years ago. I, my mom would always say, you're so sensitive. And she would start telling my siblings, all five of them, don't tell Natalie that news. <laughs> so she started to protect me from information That's because funny. I would start crying. I, I would, cried easily as a child, especially. Um, and so one day um, the Holy Spirit said to me, do not allow, you do not allow your spirit to be grieved. And I thought, you mean, Holy Spirit, I should not grieve you. And of course, we shouldn't grieve him either. Uh, especially not him, uh, but we shouldn't allow ourselves to get grieved either about so many different things. And I'll tell you in a second why, but uh, my favorite book in the Bible, Ephesians 4, is that even allowed to have a favorite book? I don't book? know. I, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I love <laughs> all the word of God. I do. I really do. But, you know, I just got so much revelation out of Ephesians when I was younger. Yeah. It kind of gets ingrained in your nervous I system, that. I think. So, I But Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit, hmm. or do not grieve Him, by the way you live. So the Holy Spirit, you know, when you uh, want to be close to somebody, the way they live really matters. Yeah. If they live a stinky life, you, it's hard to get close to them, even though you had made up your mind, you wanted to get close to them. Um, but if they have a beautiful life, a wonderful, joyous life, then you want to get closer and closer. There's people that we all know with pop, pop, pops up in their mind oh that person is really great to really be around them, yeah. and then we know people that you know those people are not so fun to be around it's a chore it's hard work you ha you have to constantly turn the conversation you have to constantly shut things off you know um and so he says don't bring sorrow to the holy spirit by the way you live hmm. um remember he has identified you as his own. So you're not your own. You're now his. Yeah. As soon as Jesus bought us with the blood of Jesus, with his blood, the Holy Spirit came and, and he came to live inside of us. And then there's also a baptism that we are, that we are celebrating next Sunday where he came in the upper room and, and a wind came and it was just, you know, the doors and windows probably flew open <laughs> and they all got filled with the Holy Spirit and tongues of fire appeared on their heads. Uh, that's so incredible. I've seen some Very pictures powerful, of yeah. some African meetings where people are taking pictures and these people all have fire on wow, their heads in, wow. this, in this prayer meeting. That's it's really amazing. amazing. Yes. And so, um, so he says he has identified you as his own. So now you're part of the family of God. You can't live any kind of lifestyle anymore. The Holy Spirit, who not only wants to be close to you, he wants to live inside of you, hearing every thought, come on, knowing every motivation, knowing every intention, knowing every plan, and knowing every motivation, yeah, why we're doing yeah. things. He has identified us as his own, and we, he wants us to be just like him. He wants us to live in a way that is pleasing to him. And he says, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. That's why he lives inside of us. With his power, we can live a saved life. Yeah. We can live out this salvation, the Bible says, with fear and trembling. Yes. Making sure every day I am making sure that I'm walking in salvation. So good. That I'm not walking in the world anymore. That person is dead, but I'm alive to God now through Jesus. And so, you know, I was sitting in my chair praying and the Holy Spirit said, this was years ago, you do not, you, <laughs> it's on me. Do not allow your spirit to be grieved. Well, you know, I didn't know what that meant or how I did that. How do I grieve? Obviously, I have an issue with grieving my spirit because otherwise he wouldn't bring it up. But as I went on, you know, every time it would happen, he would point at it and go, now you're doing that. Yeah. And, you know, my thing 
my husband, he knows I'm an investigator. If I don't understand something, I'm going to investigate. And it's also part of the gift of a teacher, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's research, like, what? Yeah. The, the, I don't know how this works? Wait. And then I'm going to go into it until I do know. I don't give up. I'm like a bulldog on that one thing I don't <laughs> know. But that also goes into a lot of other areas. I, I've done that with family. I mean, I think I know probably 10 times more than most of my siblings know about my our heritage, family heritage. I just love finding out. So what about the grandparents? What about the great grandparents? What about their great grandparents? I've gone all the way into like ancient Germany and France, <laughs> you know, and I know so many last names and their jobs and so-and-so was a mayor and I know all this kind of stuff. Why? Why do we, why do I do that? I don't know. But some information grieves us, you yeah. know, and sometimes we can, we can investigate things or look at things, especially with social media nowadays. We can get so grieved, upsetting. Come on, all of our fellow pastor friends know this. It's not good to investigate your church members. <laughs> and bosses as well. Bosses do that. Yeah. People um, are getting fired because of those. Oh messages. my goodness. And and it's okay if something pops up and you you know, you happen to see something. Take it to prayer. This is the key. If you do receive information that is not good then take it to prayer. The Bible says, roll all your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. Let him care about it. Um, and then the peace of God will, will keep your, guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, why does he want me to not be grieved in my spirit? It's because out of my spirit flow all the issues of life. Uh, my born again man, on the inside has all the, the peace, the, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the love, the goodness of the Lord, the patience, the kindness, but also the gifts of the Holy mm. Spirit or the graces is yeah. actually what it is. The outflow of the Holy Spirit wanting to work with us yes. flows from the inside. And when you're really upset, you're grieved to the point where you're either mad or disgusted or, or sad, uh, the enemy uses those things to deter our attention from what's really happening right now. The Holy Spirit has something to say to us all the time. Yeah. But when your head is screaming about an issue that's grievous to you, you can't even hear him. You're completely missing the mark. And so today I want to challenge you to a lifestyle where when you receive information and it's negative, the Bible tells us not to think about things that are that way. But to think about things that are pure and lovely and kind, praiseworthy, what mm. we can thank God for, think on these things. Why? Because then the Holy Spirit can work with us. He has good. good things to say. He has good things to say all the time. It doesn't matter what it looks like. He has a plan. He has a big <laughs> plan every single day. And when we choose not to investigate darkness and you know get on this bandwagon of the news that alone will poison the rest of your yeah. day but get on the bandwagon of holy spirit what is heaven's news right now what are you up to what are you doing what is the father doing what is the holy spirit what is jesus really interceding about you get on his bandwagon be inquisitive about what he's thinking so many times i have to say Okay, this is what I'm thinking, and I'm stuck. I can't get out of this thought. I can't get out of this emotion. And I've learned this trick that the Lord taught me to ask him what he's feeling, what he's thinking about that situation or that person. Lord, what are you thinking about this person? And this is, these are a couple steps that I have had to uh, adopt in my lifestyle, in my pattern of thinking, so that I don't grieve my spirit and become completely obsolete yeah. as an instrument of God. Amen. We all, you and I both, we all want to be used by God. And he can use us mightily if we discard what is, what is that, the, draw the precious from the worthless, yes. right? If it's not eternally going to make a difference, then ignore it. If it is going to make a difference, then cast that care upon the Lord. Petition the Lord about that. But as for you, 
you are called to be a soldier, yeah. so, soldier here on earth, full of the Holy Spirit, full of power, led by the Holy Spirit, also in your thoughts, also in your emotions, so that he can use you in a mighty way every day, every moment. Very good. Amen. Excellent.